<laughs> she says hi for real. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> she can hear us at least. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. Um, That's, what's wrong? So I think I'll start with a, a short presentation on what I um, shared with you all, and then we can get into the meat of it. So I'm going to try to share my screen. Let's see. Basement lights going on. Turn that off. There she is. trying to get ready to go to Maine. It's like, it's on. There we go. Oh. See that screen? Those were the days. <laughs> I love those pictures. Great. Looks like a picture by Vern Morton. Kind of. I don't think we know who it is, but it's the, the Hamlet around 1900. You can see the town hall in the background yeah. here. And you can the see that gone yep. and the house that's falling down about to be gone yeah. Yeah. <laughs> look that's what the garage looked like before it was torn down so um what we're going to talk about today is where we've gotten with this group um, in particular focusing on the hamlet center zone and the hamlet neighborhood zone and i just want to remind everyone um with the neighborhood this is the first draft with the Hamlet Center Zone. This is the second meeting with the draft. There's a little bit of changes. So what has this group done so far? Uh, this group started off with some visioning and goals. Um, in that process, uh, we collected some images and some thoughts about what we wanted for the future of the Hamlet. Um, I put a few of those here. People wanted uh, the Hamlet to be a uh, center for the community. Um, they wanted that traditional Hamlet feeling. They wanted options for clustering housing, um, for having small scale local businesses, for having places that people want to be. Um, the group also created a draft map showing uh, the Hamlet broken down into two distinct zones. Um, one that was called the core and one that was called um, the neighborhood. Um, I've been using core and center somewhat um, uh, Inter interchangeably. Interchangeably, and actually, I think the map had residential, not neighborhood. But again, mm -hmm. um, the the concept being there's a small number of parcels that are kind of in the middle that are the places where we would want to see commercial development if there was some, and uh, also allow more intense development. And then the rest of the Hamlet is kind of more of a residential focus. And here's that map where you see the two colors of orange, uh, the lighter orange being the more residential area and the, the small number of parcels with the darker orange being where we would allow more, including more commercial and where we really wanna get those uh, possibility of a third place gathering place um, anything like that, support small businesses. Um, so the goals that came out of that process, people said they wanna bring back more businesses, they want places to meet neighbors, um, a feeling of a community really being the heart of the town, um, being friendly to entrepreneurs, um, respecting the history of the Hamlet and um, building on that traditional Hamlet form, um, remaining compact and contained um, as it grows, being pedestrian and bike friendly, slowing traffic um, and changing that form and respecting the feelings of existing hand, um, central DNB Hamlet residents. The most feasible next steps, um, things that we can work on were started with zoning that matches our objectives. So right now the zoning doesn't really allow this. The zoning doesn't make it easy. Um, so we're working on that. Uh, we also set um, goals of recruiting more residents, um, reaching out to landowners who want to do development, um, developing and sharing the vision and understanding the tools and barriers, tools available and barriers to new businesses. So 
um, in that first step of getting the zoning more in line with the things that we said we want. Um, I presented a draft at the last meeting for the Hamlet Center parcels. Um, that started with uh, the idea of legalizing small lots, letting um, the actual constraints uh, be the thing that controls how small a lot is rather than putting an artificial constraint on top of it. You know, our mm -hmm. big barrier here is septic and um, water, and that's gonna drive the size of lots um, unless we can have other alternatives. And so um, because we really want infill and we want development in this area, we weren't gonna impose anything else on top of that. Um, we made one to four unit residential buildings um, buildable by right, as well as up to 1000 square foot retail um, we removed car dealerships from the allowed um, list of uses. Excuse me, I don't remember us saying by right. I, I don't, I don't remember anybody saying that. Well, that, that's what is in the code. That's what was in the code last time and I got positive feedback on it. So that's what well, I'm- Well, but I'm giving you negative feedback. <laughs> I've gotten lots of negative feedback. Thank you. <laughs> Noted. Uh, we capped the- a max size of retail allowed in the Hamlet Center zones so that we don't get some um, some of the kind of larger chains that people didn't feel were congruent with the feeling of a Hamlet or the tradition of the Hamlet. Um, allowed a mix of uses on a lot and in buildings and impose some basic form requirements. The feedback that the majority of the working group gave in that meeting is that they appreciated streamlining the development process for the central hamlet. This is where they wanted to see things happen. They yeah. wanted to be easier to do things there, um, especially with the limits that we put in. There was some concern that we should allow larger commercial buildings. Um, so this draft has gone up in size from a limit of 1,000 square feet, which some people thought was just not feasible for businesses up to 2,000 square feet, which is still- Yeah, thinking longer. about that, and that, I think that historically our the retail we had was smaller than, you know, a thousand square feet. Yep, and two thousand square feet is still smaller than um, even what you call small box. Um, yes. Yeah. Small box uh, chain corporate things like a CVS or um, those kinds of places, a which dandy usually start around five to eight thousand square feet. Yeah. How big are a dandy mini mart today? Uh, we can look at one in a minute, if you'd like. Um, no, I'm not interested in a Danby Mini Mart. Yeah, we, we, we'd be much more likely to get that than we would the CVS. Yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> um, I'm not advocating uh, Danby Mini Marts. I'm just saying that, you know. Yeah, I understand. You're, what's you're, you're, just, you're just looking for temp, something to give you an idea of how big it is. Yeah, well, exactly. I can tell you that the square footage of my house is 1,300. How yeah. about how about what's yeah. the what's the square footage of the meeting meeting room in town hall? Would that be sixteen hundred? Um, with the ceiling that high? Well, forget the, the, forget the footage, ceiling, not the, square, yeah. not the volume. I think it's forty by fifty. I, I think it's more. I think more like forty by forty. I think it's pretty well, we square. Can look, we can look at it on the map, and we can measure it in just a minute. Yeah. Um, so yeah. We can look okay. at some examples to understand these things. And that includes um, the bathroom space, Ted. But other oh, feedback. I'm not. I'm just looking at the room, just the room itself. Yeah, it may be closer to square, as you say. Is there any chance that we could just hear the whole presentation first? It might good idea. Thank you. <laughs> other feedback that we got um, in the first meeting that this was presented um, was that we wanted more. Uh, in the code about protecting existing trees and also requiring that new development had tree line streets. Um, and there were also calls for, you know, programs that we could do as a town to increase the amount of trees on the existing lots. That's outside of zoning. So um, mm -hmm. it's a great idea, but it's not part of zoning. But um, with the zoning, uh, we've added things that require street trees and require protection of existing trees. Um, and there was also feedback that um, we wanted more affordable development lots for houses in the Hamlet outside of the core area. So 
that we've got in the next um, section, the Hamlet neighborhood zone uh, is the name that I propose rather than Hamlet residential. I think it makes more sense. Mm -hmm. um, it, it builds on the structure and the positive attributes of the center and core area, um, but it's mostly residential. And I say mostly because it's not 100%. Um, it also legalizes small lots um, and you know, any lot size is still gonna have to be workable with the health department. Um, the feedback I got at the last meeting was that people really liked that and wanted to see that flexibility. So I kept it in rather than making up a bigger lot size. Um, it does give a lot of options. Where would you put these lots? Well, that's what the pip yeah, pip in the zone. orange is about. <laughs> um, they're, uh, it also allows a small amount of commercial or civic buildings, but they're only allowed on corners, which is kind of the traditional <laughs> place in a neighborhood where you would have that kind of use. It's convenient because you have more on-street parking when you have uh, two uh, streets that go in front of a building. And it also kind of, it's an important, um, intersections are the important places in the design of a neighborhood. So it would mm -hmm. make sense to have things like a church or a school, or there's a reason they call it a corner store or a corner pub um, mm -hmm. because they make the most sense on corners. Um, so then you can, you can allow a little more flexibility while still keeping the block or the street mostly residential. Uh, the rear yard requirement in the neighborhood zone is larger. Um, it's 60 feet required. Um, and uh, in this zone, we also allow multiple buildings on a lot. So you could do something like a cottage cluster, uh, which was something that people really liked. They wanted to see happen um, and have it enabled. Uh, there's also some basic form requirements. Um, I call them requirements for people-friendly buildings, things like the building faces the street. It has windows. It has a front that looks like a front. These are the things that make a neighborhood inviting um, to the people who are um, around it. Um, there are also, a there's also a requirement that architecture matches the commercial design guidelines for buildings over 1500 square feet. Um, and that's kind of a good size for things that are smaller than that, um, especially in a small lot context, you know, let them, let them have some flexibility if they want to do a weird modern design, let it happen. If they want to do um, something that doesn't fit what the commercial design guidelines say is that buildings should basically be traditional, that they should come from the design tradition of the area. Um, so it's good to have that, especially as buildings get bigger, that becomes more important because they have more of an impact on the neighborhood. So you're talking uh, residential as well as commercial here? Yes, because um, this, this zone does allow multi-unit buildings with site plan review. Um, and even a, a four-unit building can be you know, well above that. And so it's good to have some requirements for keeping those buildings uh, attractive, I think. I agree, Especially, because we're never, never going to sell it unless people think it's going to be attractive. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's kind of part and parcel here. We're giving some flexibility and allowing more to happen, but having some basic tools to make sure that it's pretty good. Um, and then the zone, like the other, also has tree protection and tree requirements for that development. So the commercial that you were talking about, uh, you said when your commercial wasn't allowed except in the corners. What and I presume you're not talking about eliminating the current allowance for home occupations, or are you? No, that is allowed and expanded really to mm -hmm. up to five um, employees. Mm -hmm. That's not really a home occupation. You're talking that's about way a, beyond a home occupation. A beauty salon or something where you're going to need parking and uh, there'll be all kinds of traffic. That's not really a home occupation. Well, I think there's lots of lots of small office. It's specific to office. There's lots of small offices that employ 
three, but, four. But you didn't say office. You it didn't. Does. You said home occupations. That's like what. Happened. It could be a doctor's office. It's right in the zoning. It says office. I'm not we're, sure we're we shouldn't be allowing for you know doctors' offices and hair salons and whatnot well, as home occupations or 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 as or as uh, well is, is the intention not to, they're not to be mixed use in this zone but that it be more concentrated in the core. Uh, they still can be mixed use, but the the commercial buildings buildings are only allowed on the corners. Um, well, Joel, if you're thinking traditional doctor's office, which has a doctor and a receptionist, that's one thing. But today's modern doctor office involves multiple doctors and multiple administrative staff. It, you have to be very, very careful and specific. Yeah, I understand. Same with, same with hairdressers. You know, I, I'm picturing that that southern town where some where a woman is running a hairdressing salon out of her living room, which is very different from a hairdressing salon with multiple operators and a sign out front parking. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And we've had the you know single operators out of the living room situation before. Yeah, that's that's a home occupation as opposed to a business. But it's still commercial. Yeah, it is. So that's 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 a a Hunter is raising her hand. Oh. <laughs> Catherine, I think he said. I, yes, I'm trying to say once again, can we go through the presentation? Because all of these things are subject to guidelines that may come up later. These are general ideas and it's worth hearing them because they all would help us visualize a possibility for Hamlet. I would really like to hear this. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah, well, yeah I just yeah. didn't want to, I just didn't want to, you know, lose the, the you know, the, the Talk, talk about those if, if we if we can go, go through it and then come back um that yes would, please yeah. no, meanwhile go on continue david please we are coming back there's only two more slides so okay i just wanted to give an impression of what are the kinds of things that are not allowed through this zoning um you would not be allowed uh this first picture this is um, some large lot McMansion sprawl development in Lansing. There's no trees in the front yard. The buildings uh, are really set far back. Um, they're not creating kind of a walkable streetscape. Uh, this is a kind of conventional sprawl uh, Dollar Tree where you've got the parking lot in front of the building and the building is really far set back and it doesn't have any architectural character and it, it's 100% geared towards driving by at 50 miles an hour and pulling in. Um, you would not mm -hmm. be allowed to do this kind of apartment development where it's completely focused around um, parking lots and the buildings are totally divorced from the street and there's really no neighborhood that's created there. Um, all of these things are prevented by those sets of rules. Things that are allowed, um, starting with right in the middle, what's allowed is what used to be here, what used to be in the hamlet, the form of development that was there. Um, a mix of housing types. This is a fourplex. Um, these mm -hmm. are some uh, affordable townhouses with tree-lined lawns. Um, this is kind of more of a hamlet um, a lot and block structure where you have uh, buildings that are lots of blocks that are closer together and buildings that line the street with uh, trees. And but it's still very small. Uh, this is actually Freeville. Is it? Um, so Mm -hmm. These are all examples of the kind of character that would be allowed. Um, I do want to stress that it is still difficult to get to any of these things um, because of the challenges of infrastructure. So none of this is going to pop up what? right now, but we're starting to do the due diligence to um, figure out how we can uh, unlock some of these things that the community has said they wanted. So I thought we would we could do some focused feedback on each of the two zones, and we could start with the Hamlet Center zone and the changes that have been made. Um, so I'm going to pop back up to those changes, um, and I can also bring up the actual document. Um, if that's so easy. you've oh. got to, you've already got it written into in code. Can you yes. bring up the map? So it's bigger so I can see it. It's awful small. 
The one you had at the beginning? That one? Oh, I didn't realize you could see that screen. So I'll share that again. I haven't studied it yet. Yeah, yeah. that one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make it a shape you can see the best. Oh, that's good. So is this, where's, where's Hornbrook? Right here? I'm trying to figure out what's what. <laughs> well, I mean, it's Bald Hill on the bo bottom left there. Yep, this is Bald Hill. This is 96B. Um, this is... Uh, Gunderman. Gunderman. Yeah, and this oh, is Miller. Miller. And Hornbrook so is... More it looks like the anyway. commercial zone is a lot smaller than it was in our other zoning. Is that true? Because I it thought is. it went off. Hmm? It, the commercial zone, well, it, the Hamlet Center zone is much smaller than the commercial zone in the current zoning. That's correct. So you're going to keep the commercial zoning like we have now or wouldn't have? So no. we're just going to have the dark orange. I'm just curious. I don't have any. I mean, I'm just trying to understand it. So, so you've got a tiny, tiny little commercial zone instead of having all of that area on 96B, what is kind of commercialized right now, right? Yeah, and some of the, some of the conversation that we had in the last meeting is that I actually think this is too big. Um, really, with a hamlet, the amount of commercial that you can get is an intersection. That's, that's what you get. You get four lots around an intersection. It's hard to support much more than that. Um, in this case, because um, the Hamlet has kind of sprawled, um, we wanted to, I mean, really there, you could think of almost three centers. There's the center at this intersection, which is really yeah. the historic center. There's a new center here, and there was kind of a center here because it's yeah. so far away that it's a different neighborhood, really. Mm -hmm. It is. It used to be called yeah. North Danby. Yep. Hmm. So we have shrunk the area that is um, zoned for commercial uses. Um, most of the area that's currently zoned for commercial is residential. You know, it's not. It doesn't have right. commercial uses, right. um, and, but if we want to create a sense of community, we have to focus the investment um, in a smaller area. When that commercial uh, zone was created, it was it was more, more to an eye to accommodating uh, the businesses that outgrew their residential um, appropriateness. Okay. Mm -hmm. you know, things like Angel Heart Designs or or, um, you know, stork or. Um, well, it just doesn't look like there's many opportunities to buy anything to make it into something. Like what if someone, I guess I'm thinking, what if like the house next door to our gallery, our gallery? Yeah. I was thinking, you know, that is commercial now. And it would be really cool if someone would buy that house and like make it a little shop or like a little, you know, I don't know, it, it could be offices or something like that. So I'm a little concerned that the commercial areas have been cut back so much because one of the ideas in my mind about having a Hamlet is having people be able to stay at home and work at home. And so the mm -hmm. amount of properties that are available to do that are very minimal here. You're saying some of them would have to have a, um, a home-based business, which is someone was going to have like a little art studio or a gallery or even um, some kind of little, you know, gift store. There's some I nice would disagree just that in, a, that in a little bit. I would disagree with that because there are lots Brenda, of somebody was property. talking. I, I was, I thought I was talking. I don't Let know. Let Nancy finish. I think it's Nancy, is it? <laughs> yes. Right. I mean, I'm just saying that I'm kind of think about this in a creative way in ways that people can stay and live in a hamlet, offer services, offer some employment. And it's just my reaction to seeing this. I understand your thinking behind it, that we need to expand the commercial 
options and are, or maybe somebody could be in the zoning that if someone wanted to do something commercial that they can go to the town the planning board and ask for a commercial designation that's one question i had and then i had a couple other things i wanted to offer and you guys were all talking about the size of a space and i can just tell you that the size so i know a lot of you have been in the gallery the main room is about 650, 700 square feet, and the small room is about 350. So together, it's not quite a thousand square feet. It's more or less a thousand square feet. Um, and it's too small. It's too small to do really anything with it, is my experience of trying to do any kind of uh, get, store or whatever it was before and what I ran into and I hope you guys don't mind me talking about all this because I do have a lot I want to contribute to the group about my experience when we de de um, designed that building we originally were going to have some of you know this going to have a coffee shop there and it turned out that it was only allowed to have a coffee shop there before because Ag and Market was in charge of it because it was a grocery store and you're allowed to have a coffee lunch counter coffee shop whatever but only if it makes up 50 percent or less of your total proceeds so it has to be kind of an alternative thing so then we said well let's just do like a cop you know like a little cafe and everyone wanted a place to come coffee and it turned out that we couldn't do it because with the tompkins county health department without municipal water you have to have an acre of land and your septic and um, maybe it's two acres, I can't even remember, but it was more than we had in your septic and your well had to be much further apart than what we had. So here I was with this building I designed. I'm like, well, what am I going to do with it? You know, like it's on a busy road, it's noisy. I mean, luckily the gallery is working out, you know, it, it's served a space to have a nice smaller venue for people to rent and um, it's doing okay since you know we just kind of started going with it again so um when you talk about a thousand square feet for business it i think two thousand is much more reasonable and then my other question is that two thousand square feet per business or mm -hmm. for the whole building because our building whole building ourselves is is forty five hundred square feet because it's big tom's got a big shop i have a studio yeah, in there. right so anyway that's kind of what I wanted to offer. I don't know if it's helpful. Um, and I also wanted to say something about, do you have, is this requiring trees in front of a commercial building with tree lined road? Because we had to replant our berm and I didn't plant trees because it if you have a business, you don't really want to block your facade of your building with trees. So um, I'm not sure how that, that fits in with this whole concept, but that's just my take on it. Thanks for listening <laughs> again. Do you have any questions for me, anyone, about what I was talking about? That was helpful. I have a couple of clarifications. Um, the 2,000 square feet area is not the maximum area for a retail shop. It's the maximum area for a new retail use that does not require site plan review. So you can go up to 6,000 square feet with site plan review. But we oh, want okay. to have an option for, if you want to do something really small and test it out, maybe even in a temporary building, um, you can do that in a really streamlined way because we want to get things in there. And then if you wanted to build something bigger, um, then you can go through site plan review. And, you know, that's a more, it's a, a bigger burden, but it, it makes sense for a bigger building that's going to happen. I always enjoy going to the planning board and getting feedback or, or whatever. I go to the IOPC, the historic people, because the people that are on that boards usually have a lot of ideas and sense by being involved of what is a, a good idea and whatever. So I don't think that's a bad idea at all to have people go for site plan review. What did sure. you have another clarification? Sorry, did I see your hand? Um, I did have another clarification, which was on your question about trees. Um, so it's 
there is a requirement that for new buildings or for renovations that are more than half the value of the building, you do need to add street trees or trees in front of the building. And there's a requirement for how much. It's one tree for every 30 feet of road. That's um, a lot of trees. Holy cow, you'd have, a, that's not even enough room. That's not enough room for a tree. Depends on the size of the tree. It's a, it's I, a I don't different. think that's a good idea. You're, I personally would never go for that in front of our building. It would have, those trees would grow up and block the whole front of the building. It's a, it's a typical street tree spacing. Um, but there is also an out for oh, <laughs> if there is a, uh, like <laughs> a reason that you can't, particularly um, because of below grade utilities or the existing design of the street or overhead utilities, those kinds of things that would prevent it. Um, well, with our situation, we didn't have much room between ourselves. Yeah. And the road. It's it pretty close to the road, right? Yeah. So you yeah. wouldn't be required to. But I if somebody had a, were, a hard time figuring out how to do the front of that building. It took months of like, what kind of tree? What should it look like? What, you know. So anyway, it's it's coming along. Yep. All right. Thank you. Ted wanted to talk. Well, I, I had a <clears throat> excuse me. I had a number of things, but I'd like to offer something to respond to Nancy. Um, and this came out of a sort of a controversy or a loud discussion about something that happened in College Town several years ago, where the College Town, the planning board in, in Ithaca, allowed certain things to be, to, certain buildings to be built. And then unexpectedly, someone decided to build one of those buildings at the extreme of the neighborhood where there mm -hmm. where everything around it was residential. And what that applies to, to Nancy and to other things that were in your description is that, for example, if Nancy did buy the property next door to her, she could, the idea is only permit expansion next to an existing zone. So she could buy the property next to her and she could ask for an expansion it, to expand the zone by one lot, a gradual creep, if you will. But someone could not just buy a property arbitrarily and say, okay, we want to put a, we want to commercialize this. Uh, I, I think that that would be a solution that allows that zone to grow if it does without, without impacting the residential part of it as much. And I'll, I'll leave the rest until you get back and put up the slide that, you know, that, that white page with comments. Oh, please, please go ahead. Give more comments. This is the time for okay. comments about the okay. well, if it, centers. Could you, could you put, uh, I'll try to do it by memory, but please have that slide, Andy. Um, I too am a little bit concerned about the, the buy right, but rather than say, I don't want it, let me just ask the question, what levels are there between not permitted and buy right? Is there some middle ground which allows for review so that so that unexpected things can't happen without some kind of review? That was one. Um, there was one picture you showed, uh, which maybe it would be okay on a really small scale, but I very much like the idea that you should be able to see our rural character between houses. In other words. No, no 10 foot spaces between, between adjacent places. It's just, that's just my feeling. I think that you might get away with it for one or two houses in the center of the hamlet, but I don't think it should be the rule. And uh, finally about the space issue, um, per, perhaps I would agree that a thousand feet is pretty small, but I think that 2000 feet is already getting into the big, big area. So perhaps there's something in between that would be the general rule of what's allowed. So those were the comments on that very first page. Yeah, it also matters where it is. Yeah, it does. And the Hamlet yeah. Center is a pretty small area, but even so, 2,000 feet in that area by right would be a little difficult. 
So uh, a couple of things to um, share. Um, you asked, a, I think, a very good question, which is what is in between by right and not allowed? And I think it's worth noting that right now, we do have things that are by right. So by right isn't a new thing. Right now, a single family home is by right. A farm is by right. Um, depending on the zone, there are other things that are by right. And what by right means is that if you meet the setbacks and other requirements of the zoning, you go to the building department and you get a building permit for the building that's allowed. Um, it gets reviewed by me as the planner to make sure it matches the zoning. Um, it gets reviewed by me as the stormwater officer to make sure that it has a stormwater plan. It gets reviewed by Steve as the code enforcement officer to make sure that it meets all of the health and safety requirements for not falling down, not making people sick, um, following ADA, all of those kinds of things. So that is the level of review that happens for things that are by right. It just means you don't have to go through a multiple month um, planning board review for your project. Um, there are places that have a step in between um, by right and requiring site plan review, uh, which is kind of the next step up. Um, so there are places that have administrative review of things. So you could have administrative review, which means staff review. It would mean me reviewing things um, based on guidelines. So you could have a set of guidelines that has maybe a little more flexibility than just checking the boxes. Mm -hmm. Does it meet the requirements, yes or no? Or you could have a process that staff does some additional guiding. Um, there's places that take that to an extreme of having what's called a town architect um, where literally there's one person who signs off on uh, the actual drawings of every building um, to make sure that they meet uh, kind of the expectations of that development. And then the step up from there is um, site plan review by the planning board. Uh, a step up from that um, is a special use permit. And I think I've talked to this group a little bit about the dangers of special use permits and why they're generally considered not a good idea anymore. Um, for a special use permit to hold up, process to hold up, you need to have in the code the very specific criteria that would be used for describing whether or not uh, a site was appropriate for that special use. So sometimes it's used for something that you might allow some places in the zone, but not other places. And most municipalities that use special use permits, they use it inappropriately. And they say, we're just gonna let the board say what and when they want anything. And we'll call it a special use. And you know, the planning board can say yes or say no based on what the neighbors think and how they feel that day and those kinds of things. And that's definitely not um, supported by New York state courts. It's, you cannot have zoning that is based on um, just based on complaints or based on what the neighbors feel or based on the board's particular opinion. You have to have actual criteria that they are using for their review. Um, and then the next level is not allowed. Mm -hmm. So a, a question there. I mean, let's say you were talking about the one to four unit residential mm -hmm. structure. And I can see it both ways. Perhaps the intent is to try to get all of those structures in a in close proximity to each other, or perhaps the intent is not to allow them to be too close to each other. I'm I, I'm not I don't care which way you're you're looking at it. Mm -hmm. How would you set it up so that someone could so there could be a review of it, whether it is appropriately close or far from the other structures uh, beyond the zoning requirements of setbacks you mean beyond checking the boxes off yes um, so the reasoning behind that one to four units as being by right where currently one unit is by right um, one or two. That, 
one and two is my right, that's right, yeah. is that um, HUD and the FHA and Fannie Mae all consider one to four units to be a, a single family mortgage. Um, and this is a, a growing trend around the country of saying, if you can have a four bedroom house, why can't you have a house with four one bedroom apartments? If you can have a six bedroom house, why can't you have a building that has four studios for seniors? Um, the impact is relatively small. And so that's the, the thinking of, you know, this should be considered in the same way that we would consider basically a large house. Um, Mm -hmm. Right, but I'm, I'm asking about cumul controlling cumul cumulative effect, not one. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you could do any of the things that I mentioned, but I don't, I don't think there's any cumulative negative effect of having multiple fourplexes, for example. Um, in fact, there's, I've been to some fantastic neighborhoods that are mostly fourplexes. Right, like, like I said, you could either be aiming to encourage them in one area or prohibit them. I don't care which one it is, but you're saying that there's really no good mechanism for being able to enforce that either way. So I, that's not I what think, I'm hearing. Yeah, if you're saying they're allowed in the zone, then they're allowed anywhere in the zone. Um, you know, it gets pretty complicated. There, I have seen codes that have kind of arbitrary things like, um, you know, you can have one, but you can, can't have one next to another or, and then you start having one person's exercise of their property rights impinging on the next person's, you know, you can't do something because your neighbor already did it. Um, and most of that kind of flows, honestly, from a kind of classism that says these units are of less value than a single family home. So we want to rash, ration their presence in the community. Yeah. Mm. And all of the grade gradations that you described really ultimately boil down to checklists. In other words, even the most rigorous site plan review has to basically has a set of criteria. And as long as you meet the criteria, or can argue your way into saying this meets the criteria, it, it, it's a by right. Even though it's a review, you just have to meet the criteria. Yes. Or am, am I missing that? No, I mean, that, that is the way zoning works. When you have a use that's allowed, the board can require you to make changes, to do mitigations. They can't say you can't do that use because it's an allowed use. So you cannot have a system where a board or neighbors or anyone gets to say on a case-by-case -case scenario whether or not a use is allowed. It has to be uniformly applied. So for example, it, distinguishing between a four bedroom house and a four unit rental, um, four could, you, could there be a requirement that something for rental includes enough parking for the residents, whereas something that's intended for a four bedroom family does not. Um, so I'm just trying no, to come up with some criteria. There are, you can have different criteria that are based on units rather than based on bedrooms. I can tell you that um, municipal, no one is good at guessing the amount of parking that's needed. And that's one of the biggest barriers to keeping housing affordable. Um, you know, there's single family houses that own six cars and there's people who live in apartments who don't own any. Um, there really isn't a good way to set a required number of parking spaces. And I strongly suggest that the town not go there because it it only leads to driving up costs and wasting space. Does the town, in this particular example, does the town permit, would the town permit parking not, that is not off street parking? Yeah, I, I, parking is an allowed accessory use. 
No no I meant you were talking about on street parking that we Yes, to... would it permit on street parking? I don't see why not. So you you could have someone who converts a four bedroom house into four units and expects the people to park on the road. Sure. Well, I'm just picturing that for our for our limited downtown. And yeah. I'm not I'm not sure that that's a picture that I look forward to. It's not currently allowed by the the DOT. Yeah, I can see it would be a problem in winter time. I don't think they're allowed to do it right now. It's illegal. It's illegal. I have checked. Right, but we're we're talking about new development here, so yeah. the town doesn't control the state. Uh, but someone right, may, right. Oh. If Rhonda is correct that the state doesn't permit overnight on street parking that might answer my question because we are talking about on street and it is a state route yeah yeah and, and, and currently on the town roads we have the uh the, we have a prohibition against parking when when the snow removal is an issue but our 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 town roads or let's call it non-state routes roads including so i'm including county roads um, are they designed to have parking on both sides in addition to the road well some of them are accommodated i certainly here in the middle of west Danby, you've got shoulders are wide enough and people on occasion do park along the road um, overnight on, on, I, several cars overnight on a regular basis not usually overnight um, it's usually during the day, you know, if for you know, somebody has a bunch of people over for a party or and, right. you know, they park up and down the road uh, on the street. Uh, and, and you feel comfortable with that in West Danby? Yeah, it works okay. And when the church was a going concern, they used to, that they would, that's what ended up doing. It was very little parking. There was no real parking lot for the church. So they parked up and down the street. And sometimes if they had a big event, they wrapped around the corner and went up Maple Avenue or down Station Road. Um, in this room, inside the white line, you know, or outside the white line, if anyone's side is looking at but it. But Joel, isn't it true that the the zoning ordinance currently requires that a commercial business have a parking lot? I don't recall that being in there, actually. So there you're are, telling me that the fact that the that the Finger Lakes Nursery at the intersection of Muzzy Road and 96B can open a business and not put in a parking lot. Well, a lot of the stuff that's in our zone, zoning now, it's been a long time to look at this, but you know, there, there's, there's off street parking requirements are in there for some things that I recall. There are. Are we just are talking we? about the Hamlet though and not the rest of the community? Should no, we just- right. We're only talking about the Hamlet. Let's stay focused on that if we could. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, what about the, uh, would you allow the cidery then to uh, open up without a parking lot? In the Hamlet? Is that what you're talking about? Because we're it's talking about- the Hamlet, Hamlet, isn't it? No, it's, well, actually, no, it's, it's outside that place is the outside. Hamlet. Yeah. I think the new place requirements for commercial um, businesses and for these home businesses that have five people working there. I think we need more definition on these home businesses. I'm not sure if this is the place to do it, but um, yeah, I'm, I was speaking about residences, but yes, thanks for bringing that back. And if you're allowing, depending on your definition of, of home occupation, there really ought to be some requirement for off-street parking. Well, so depends. What the code proposal says is that permitted as an accessory use is professional offices where such office is part of the resident's property and no more than five persons not residing in the premises are employed. That, that's what I was talking about that allows more people than the current home occupations definition. Now, that, that's what you wrote or what is existing? That's what you wrote. What wrote. Right, yeah, it, could you exactly. About, sorry, could you tell us what's existing right now? Or do we not, is this part of the 
Hamlet discussion? Is yeah. that it? It is. This yeah, is sure. something. This is something that allows more flexibility in the Hamlet than is allowed elsewhere. So I think that's an important distinction to remember. Yeah. If you don't live in the yeah. Hamlet, this isn't about what your neighbor can do. This isn't about what can happen near you. This is about what can happen in a different place where we're trying to create a different kind of community. And that kind of flexibility is at the core of what this different kind of place is about. So if it seems to you like something, gee, I wouldn't like that. Well, of course not. You haven't chosen to live in the Hamlet for a reason. Um, we're, we're talking about something that's different. But um, I, you know, if Ted through with his um, list of things, I'd, I'd like to focus attention on the, on the commercial component. Uh, I think that, uh, that the one thing that has worked reasonably well for us is this home occupation um, provision that's in our ordinance where it distinguishes between home occupations that for which there's no external evidence and then home occupations for which there is external evidence. And when you jump from the no to there is, um, it, it currently is subject to a special permit, I think it is, because we didn't much use site plan approval at the time, but, but it could easily be site plan approval. But then the other constraint was that uh, in order to, to limit the size of it, it limits the number of employees. Uh, and isn't it two full-time equivalents? Or um, David, do you remember? Um, I'm looking at the definition of home occupation now. Um, See, and see, it's, see, it's important to know that home occupation allows more intensive occupations than what I described, which is an office in a house. Um, and that's on purpose. So home occupation includes dressmaking, hairdressing, teaching, laundering, carpentry, electrical and plumbing work, and similar types of activities, and professional offices. Um, architects, lawyers, doctors, dentists, engineers, insurance brokers, um, operated by the person living in the property and employing not more than two additional people. Okay, so it's two. So this, that has worked reasonably well. Um, the 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 the, the uh, violations that we currently have are when somebody has created a space, for instance, carpentry or leatherworking or or pottery. Um, they create they converted their barn or they built a special purpose structure for the purpose of conducting or you know having a woodworking business. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the they leave. And uh, somebody else buys the place and they've got this already fully set up, you know, woodworking shop or pottery studio. And so they rent it. Um, the use hasn't changed, but it's no longer a home occupation because they're not the owner. So if it was okay when it was a home occupation, why is it not okay now? You know, because somebody else is doing it. So in, in my mind, I mean, the only thing you might say, well, if, if, if you're renting it out to somebody else, uh, it might not be as, it, you, there, there's a, an increased probability that it might be managed or used in a way that's insensitive to its neighbors, it's different if you live there. Okay, that's, that is a concern. But uh, generally though, I think probably it would be okay. And, and if, we're, if we're looking at making commercial, you know, what level of commercial activity is okay, I think we ought to be saying that what's, if it's okay as a home occupation, it would be okay if it's not a home occupation, but doing the same thing much the same way. <laughs> so how do we codify that? Let's... Well, but, but you do, but we currently, we currently allow the homeowner plus two. Yes. Yes, which is a different story than homeowner plus five. Well, yes, that's true. It, I mean, that, what, what, a, David, what, what David's proposing for the Hamlet would be somewhat larger, would allow for somewhat larger scale of the same kind of businesses. Uh, but with a more limited impact business because you couldn't do a carpentry shop with five people or a welding shop with five people. It's only for office. Yeah, so, so it's a shorter, a more limited palette of possibilities. And yet there's still the option of home occupation with up to two people, but there's the additional option of if they're just do, doing office work, 
if it's just an architect and his assistants, or if it's just, you know, a person who started an internet company and they have four yeah. people working with them, you know, they're not doing anything that creates an impact on the neighborhood. They're Except just parking. It's a parking room. If you have, have a parking employees. requirement for home occupations, I'm sorry. If you have five people, and the 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 house is two places to park, where are the people going to park? They're going to probably park in areas that could be an interference to the neighbors. You know, I know what you're saying, David, about not wanting to have the parking requirement, but that is really one way to kind of limit the amount of people that are using a home as an occupation when. It, Five people in a home is, is not a home occupation. It's a real business, as far as I'm concerned. Home occupation is your home being a potter or something like that, or well, David's not suggesting that David's not suggesting that that's, we expand the definition of home occupation. He's suggesting that we expand the kind of business that we're going to allow in the hamlet. Right, but I, I, he said that he doesn't want. We're still sort of. I'm stuck on the parking. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to think, well, what if someone next to my business downtown, right? I'm in the Hamlet. Yeah. Like only one there, right? I'm the only business in the Hamlet right now, pretty much. But and you're not. Uh, no, you're not. You're not <laughs> there are here. lots of businesses in the Hamlet. But um, there is down further, there are, but right around me, there aren't. I'm just saying, and if someone wanted to start something right next door, say someone did start something right next door and they didn't have enough place to park, they're gonna park in my parking lot because they're not required to have any parking for their home occupation. I think parking should be a requirement for how many people you're gonna have. You should have one parking place for each employee in a home occupation, including one for yourself. That's what I, I think, think. So there's really good research that providing parking creates driving and that people can figure out alternatives better if there isn't as much parking. So, you know, if we're on gonna... the street is the alternative. Yeah, well, on the street, which is more dandy. There's, people, the there's bus. one or two buses that come through a day. I mean, a bike. there are a lot of options. I don't think that's realistic. We are going to be driving. That's not going to go away. The whole world, our whole country is, the, is I like the idea of, of having walkability. Don't get me wrong, but cars aren't going to go away. I mean, I was just in Columbus, Ohio, and I'm telling you, I've never seen so many huge boulevards with tree-lined boulevards with more mowing than anyone could possibly do. And it's one after another after another. And this is just the way things have been set up in our country. Hopefully, we're going to have electric cars, so we're, we're greener. But your concept of people not driving, I think, I, I understand what you're saying, but in Danby, there's just not enough there there for people to be able to walk to a job or whatever, maybe one or two. But then what if someone has customers? Where are the customers going to park? But you got to think about being in business. You've got to think about being in business for what yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. How about shared parking, though? I mean, I was thinking about this. I was lying in bed last night, as a matter of fact. Um, you know, if you had, if for instance, You've got this parking lot next to the church now. Why can't that serve a business across the street or, or the house next door or across the street? You know, why does why does each one have to have parking for its customers? Why not that, share the parking? And that's an excellent that's, that's an excellent point. Joel. Idea. More importantly, but, and an it, important distinction between not having parking and not requiring parking. Yeah. When you require parking, right now what our zoning requires is 300 square feet of parking area for every 100 square feet of building. You can't oh, build a neighborhood mm -hmm. like that. You cannot like build crazy. a decent place when you require three times as much space for parking as you do for building. Well, that obviously needs to be changed, but just to go from that to no parking requirements, I don't think is, is very good for consideration for the neighbors around the people that if you're saying it's a home occupation, that means it's residential and you got to kind of keep that in mind. And if it's a commercial area, you got to think about, you know, you want someone to open a business and not be able to have place for their customers to park. Well, I mean, that's, their choice. That, that's, that's where Joel's idea becomes important. When you, when you talk about shared parking, 
if you want a business, you either have to provide your own parking or make a commercial private arrangement with somebody else nearby. And that's where your customers go. And again, that, that, that will be self-limiting. I mean, they do that in downtown Ithaca. Tompkins County Trust has a parking lot just for their employees and it's several blocks away. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not, that's a good idea, but there's just not that many big parking lots in Danby. There are people are gonna be sharing um, maybe in the future, but you have limited the, the amount of area where you can even buy or do commercial to like practically nothing. Um, we've, got, really we've, got three, we've got three substantial parking lots yeah. already, right in the core. Yeah. Yeah. Which and, are those? And I, I want to- The park, uh, has uh, name those, well, the, the park has parking for the parking ride, which isn't available for businesses. Uh, town hall has some space, but I don't think you'd want to fill that up. And you have the church, which is available most of the time, yeah. but not all. The fire, st the fire station. I mean, that used to be the parking lot. Used the fire um, station. Everybody used that parking lot. I think yeah, there may be a liability thing involved. That's true. But there, nobody, I'm just saying, because I'm there down, I, my studio looks at the fire um, station parking lot. And I, our business probably uses it more than anybody because unfortunately people just aren't mm -hmm. in riding anymore. Like one truck. No, is not there. No. Yeah. And they, they, yeah, they don't the, park there anymore. Yeah, they took away the little building where people could like st at least stay out of the weather. Okay, it, it, we'll moved, it moved to across town from town hall, Nancy. It oh. moved. So I want to interrupt because I see that Catherine. Yeah, yeah I was going to say Catherine has had a chance to put a word in. Yeah, I know. Her hand must be sore. Now, I, I just want to say that I see what we're doing. We're looking at every problem that could possibly come up, and we won't be able to name them all. So we, I, we could conceivably have a little parking subcommittee where, where people could think of the positive ways that we might be able to do something about it, and that might be a nice thing. And I do want to, because you're thinking of negative things, I do want to say that having owned a massage therapy school and knowing what it's like to have a home occupation that isn't well thought of, the quiet, just, just so that you understand that we, there are lots of ways to look at things. A massage therapist sees one person at a time a, and they're quiet. Okay, let's say that we think another home occupation is a person who teaches piano lessons at that house. And that is a classical piano teacher who teaches uh, Prokiev or, you know, lots of really pounding piano music all day long. One person, one, per, um, one client, and one car visiting. So let's not look at this in the negative way. Remember, we're talking about how to revitalize the hamlet. Mm -hmm. And we're coming up with lots of ideas. And some of the things that we've looked at are little side streets with additional housing that also could have parking for those. Let's try and look at this in a positive way. And if we need to discuss parking, have it be a separate meeting or a little a parking committee. And I think that the idea that what we're doing is wonderful, trying to brainstorm about how can we do this and all trees aren't bad all cars aren't bad, you know. Anyway, that's my two cents. Yeah, one thing I well, a, diff, a, a different point that that, that uh, I'd I'd like to have a um, little bit of feedback on. Um, David, you suggested, uh, and and it was very. You showed a picture of Freeville, and the and 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 your guidelines talked also about putting putting businesses on the corners. Um, we don't have very many corners. Uh, you know the lot and block structure uh, is kind of wanted here in order to do in much of expansion or sort of organically and densely. How do we get from where we are to a lot and block? We have a corner at the intersection of Hornbrook Road and 96B, and that corner has been for sale all the years I have lived here. And it's owned by the two guys who owned Auto Salvage. And I even asked them about that parcel, you know, why, about the sign on there saying that it's for sale. And they have never sold that parcel. 
and it's zoned commercial. I always thought that this sign was because they wanted to sell the property up the road, yeah, yeah. Not, not the corner. It is for that parcel right there. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Yes. Mean, that, but that's totally the, beside the question here, which is yeah. how do we get to um, blocks, which we look at. But that's a corner lot. Yeah, I mean, that's, there are a couple corners. Uh, if we uh, I believe the last time that that neighborhoods were discussed, you know, that that consultant, mm -hmm. there was a an, an rather strong um, uh, feedback that that's not going to happen. Well, I mean, there was, was, there am was, I wrong about that? There was strong opposition to the idea of a connector between Bald Hill and Gunderman. Yeah. Yes. That was the only that was the only proposal. So yeah. if we just set that aside I and mean, ask the ask the bigger question, I mean, how it, it's it's pretty hard to have you know buildings oriented to the street if your streets are already there and you're not going to add any new ones and they're already lined. Right. So you know there has to be a way to expand the expand the grid, so to speak, um, someplace, somehow, into the into the light orange. So well, I, I, I you've already know, done I, that. I, there are many commercial sites that are not listed on this map. And I can point them out to you. Yeah, sure. Um, that's not my point, though. I mean, I'm really talking more about accommodating residential and um, and then what, what David's allowing for is the, the, the kind of, it was in, in fact, in the neighborhood zone, was it, David, wasn't it, David? It's, it's within the hamlet here, but within in the neighborhood zones as opposed to in the core. Yes, right? so commercial is allowed everywhere in the core zone. It's only allowed on corners in the neighborhood zone. Right. All right, so, uh, so the neighborhood zone is outside of the orange and there's not very many corners. The only corners currently in the neighborhood zone um, would be East Miller or East and West Miller. That's a four corner intersection. That's in. The that's country. not. That's not in the core, though. Right. We're talking. No, that's about, in the neighborhood oh, no, no, zone. It's in the neighborhood. Okay. Right. right. Um, and then and, and the Michigan south Hollow. Side, yeah. Michigan Hollow. Yeah. Michigan Hollow. White Hawk. Um, the south corner here of. Um, well, yeah. uh, Hornbrook. Hornbrook, yes. Right, right. Yeah. What about Whitehawk? It's not a road. It's just a drive. It was built to, it was built to town road. specs as a road. I don't think so. If, Joel, if you're asking why they already, won't people build, it's because there are already too many commercial facilities there. Why would you want to build on that road and put a house up? Put a house up on that road. That's not what I was asking. I was no. asking if we're going to add resident residences, if we're going to have a neighbor, neighborhoods, and they're not going to be the ones we already have, how do we get from where we got to a lot and block structure? Yeah, there's only a few places where we could possibly get blocks. Um, basically, what Olivia proposed creates a, a block this? that we don't currently have. We kind of have it already. Yeah, um, that gets so somewhat more of a block so structure. Um, there is potential for a block structure on the Dobson parcel. There's potential yes. for a block structure. Um, you know, blocks should really be relatively small. So it, there's potential to make a block mm -hmm. here. I don't think it's less likely because it's more than one parcel. So someone would have to consolidate them. And then there's the potential to make blocks here. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it in the Hamlet. Um, well, I guess you could make you could make a block at the school if that became available. But there's no connectivity between those proposed blocks, the ones that are proposed by Olivia and the ones you pointed to. There's no connectivity from those blocks to anywhere. They're just well, they're within, they're, blocks. What's the uh, what's the walking distance thing? With the ten, is it ten minutes? The prime walking distance is a quarter mile, which is about ten minutes. And what? And what? What? What are we looking at here in terms of the uh, one length of the end of the other of the of the pale orange? Too far. Too far. Yes. <laughs> I don't remember. I mean, even Olivia's it's parcel doesn't connect with the park. But it could. 
but it's not in her proposal. In her proposal, you create a, a basically a block around her lot that is connected to the park because you go across the street to the park. Well, I, that doesn't connect anybody else. You could run, you could run uh, Bald Hill across the street and have an intersection there and, and run it right straight back to the park. And then suddenly you have a block with the park road as the backside. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure the park would appreciate that, of course. They might, but. They might, well, you know, that would, would you know, appreciate might be the wrong word, but I mean, they might be willing to entertain it. That's it, also at the long, the far end of town, South Danby. <laughs> So no, it's just right in the middle of town. I mean, I, most of us think of most of us think of, of the the the, the uh, Danby Community Church Town Hall area as the middle. Yeah. The ham, the the core. I don't consider it the center. So well, that's, the, that's part of the problem is you know wh where is the center of Danby? But you know, I, um, and I think that. You know, David made a case. I thought it was, it was very interesting that you know most places, uh, a church building or or civic building is, you know, this regarded as sort of the center. Yeah. One of the things that we looked at last time was the comparison between um, cores that we know of and the space in Danby. And one of the things that I showed the group was that just the distance from the church to the end of Olivia's parcel is all of the downtown of Groton, half the downtown of Trumansburg, um, half most of the downtown of Dryden. Uh, it's, it's hard for people to get a concept of scale when you're used to seeing things at 50 miles an hour, which is what most people are used to um, on 96B, but the a walk, and yeah, I think Leslie is pointing out, you're not supposed to be going 50 miles an hour, but a lot of people are. <laughs> um, this, the traditional scale of even a village is much smaller than what we're talking, what we've outlined. And, you know, this outline was done with. Yes, uh, and with that's why I would like to propose that we get rid of it. Get rid of what? Get rid of what? The Hamlet, period. That orange, the dark orange line. Get rid of the whole thing because it serves absolutely no purpose. And replace it in, and extend it to the to the shaded orange area. I would rather well, and I don't even see that there's any justification for putting Jennings Pond and the woods, Jennings Woods, into the Hamlet. Why would you do that? It doesn't even belong to us. So I, I propose that we make small um, zones instead of, and I would propose that all of um, the, the parcel or the part of Danby that is 40 miles an hour there, that be considered a commercial zone, the whole thing. Um, and the reason for that is because there are already so many commercial uh, entities there, facilities, or there are parcels that are already zoned commercial. And if you want to stick a house in between, well, and they're willing to do to be in between the guy who has the construction site and Craig's who has the auto or Lane's who has auto and all of the large rental facilities, then good luck to them. Well, Rhonda, how would you deal with the fact that a good deal of that, a good good portion of what you're talking about, is residential. You remember the fight about there Eagle are forty Auto. house. I counted them. There are forty places that that are used as dwellings, and at least eight of them are large rentals in which the owner does not live. So there's still thirty people who, who. Yeah, there's still thirty people who think who think that they're they're in a residential area they're wrong oh, i'm but. not sure this, the, i don't know all of what's going on with those 
30 houses. A few of them I do know that they are single family dwellings, but the others could be multiple family dwellings. They could be something else other than uh, a dwelling. It could be a house that's used for something else. And in fact, Nancy just mentioned that the place next to her is commercial. So there are really? lots of commercials. I mean, why were all of these commercial facilities allowed to build? And a lot of them have gone up in the time that I have lived here and I never saw a hearing, nothing. I, the, these things are going up for, for example, the construction company that is right there near Hornbrook Road. How did that happen? This is a really far off topic. No, it's not, because this is what's happening all over Danby, and yeah. it'll continue. It is off topic, and the reason it's off topic is because what we're talking about is how do we adopt zoning that meets the goals of the town's comprehensive plan, and adopting zoning that turns all of the hamlet into an industrial commercial strip mall area is not what the town wants, and it's not what they put in their comp plan. And, um, but I didn't propose a strip mall or anything like that. And that's not what's going up right now. Mm. Well, what you did propose was, was, was having commercial the whole length of what's currently like orange. All along 90, all the part that is 40 miles an hour because you could put up um, more apartment buildings uh, you could put up uh, a cafe like Olivia wants. It's going to have to be commercial or as uh, David calls it, retail. Um, all of those things are things that people have proposed. Somebody wanted a hardware store. Okay, so there it is. Put it, put it in that area. But leave it right there rather than on Gunderman Road or Bald Hill Road or Mil the Miller Roads keep it right there and call that commercial area number one, call stork commercial area number two or commercial zone area two and Lamort electric commercial area number three and on and on throughout the town where all of these little commercial things have popped up without a hearing. Sounds like um, you're describing the current zone. It's yeah. <laughs> the what zone? The existing zone. zone. Oh, well. But that, that is true. I mean, that's what's happening. These people are putting things up without even hearing. I don't understand how Lamort even, mm -hmm. that is off topic. I don't understand how they were able to convert a residential house into a commercial facility. It's still a residential house. It's a home occupation. Yeah, it is. Mm, I, that's not a true home occupation. That's not what a home occupation is. Operating a business out of your barn? home is, is right. home occupation. The whole barn? No, no way. We have interpreted it that way for a very long time. They're, well, they're, not, the, they're not the only that. one. They just happen to be the one that's visible on, on 96B. Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm not just sort of singling them out. But, um, you know, it's, we, we need to rethink that. Yeah, I don't, maybe, I mean, maybe part of... I mean, I feel like, tell me if I'm wrong, we're looking at maybe getting rid of the commercial A, commercial B, and we're going to, and we're looking at having a core, a Hamlet core zoning and a Hamlet neighborhood zoning. Mm -hmm. We're not going to, are we going to call it commercial zoning? Okay. I, lo I like that. I mean, I just, you know, the whole thing that happened with the, um, Evo Automotive. I mean, there were people who lived next door, and here was a commercial C sitting right there um, that was, you know, commercial C because it was spot zoning for somebody who knew somebody else 50 years ago. I mean, so I like getting rid of the commercial name. Well, we might want um, to so. Well, I, you know, why if we have these, the core and, and, the neighborhood. I, I mean, I, I feel like um, I, I like getting away from calling something a commercial zone. Um, yeah, I, it's just a name, a, but I agree, a, I agree with her. A, a I agree with her. You know, it's such a small town. 
Uh, we've got little, you know, um, I, I don't know. I, I happen to like that. And I felt like that's where we were going. It and doesn't have to be, can it be both? Can we have a core Hamlet commercial that has special zoning that makes it? Well, that would be the, the dark like orange. Part. The dark orange would be the, the core, which right, but then know, leave the typically the commercial. Property. I'm wondering about the property owners that know their property is commercial and has a certain value or potential down the road. And then we yeah. change the zoning and then they're not commercial anymore. I think we need to talk about that. Oh, no, totally. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. But I have a question, if you don't mind. I mean, that would that Nancy, that was actually talked about, and it was in the you know getting more residents and people who own along there to get involved. Yeah. So that's hard yeah. to do that because I think uh, it's probably a lot of rental properties. And yeah. I don't any I'm not anything about that. But could you someone uh, tell me what the dark outline is around? There's a the uh, yeah, the red Doons line. Yeah, Doonesbury, <laughs> Mike Doonesbury. Oh, Trumansburg. No, I'm no. just kidding. It's, it's, it's the profile of Mike Doonesbury. Oh. <laughs> That's what the town previously considered to be Hamlet. I don't know why. Okay. It's, it, it's it, it, was, it was done by those no consultants. actual definition of the edge of a Hamlet. Yeah, Hamlet it's aren't big something that. that is incorporated, so they don't have edges. But this was created earlier. Um, as what the town currently considers to be the Hamlet. Maybe in a so bit. Leslie, if you don't like commercial, what this proposal that Olivia has where she would have all of these shops that look kind of like community corners, what would you call it? Mixed use. Mixed At use, but mixed use is houses and yeah, commercial. She had, she had, she had, she and had residential and commercial in her proposal. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, I, well, I, I just want to say, I, it, it's only a name, but it's public relations, and I think Leslie is right. Taking the word commercial out of the name of, zo of a zoning district and replacing it with Hamlet XY, which is defined to include commercial activity, it, yes. it, it may be just a name change, but it sounds so much better. Well, but this, I, I don't really care what it's called. I don't really care what it's called. Good. But the whole thing is that once you start putting in all of those truly commercial properties, whether it's a dry cleaner or something else, um, people are not going to want to live there. We should be so lucky as to have our businesses competing for locations on 96B. Yeah. I think, you know, David's point was, you know, a, a town the size of Danby is lucky to be able to support one corridor, let alone a corridor that's, you know, half a mile long. Yeah. No, but the and fellow I, I who came know, to the, would, the would, fellow who came to the PUD meeting when CJ was the planner very clearly stated that he wanted to, to he owned the property at yeah. the intersection of Michigan Hollow and 96E, and he wanted to put in a laundry company there. That that was what it originally was going. That's what he originally wanted to put in. That's why it was a PDZ. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. But he yeah. said he still wanted to do that. He no, still wanted he was, to. He, that. No, he was he was wanting to do something. That was the the tail end of that was he I don't think they were wanting to do carpet cleaning anymore. I think he and didn't he CJ said he say was I will in doing he, something, which is why it was left a PDZ. And no, it wasn't. Oh yeah. She said she would zone it commercial. Or commercial. Is it is it just commercial now? Or that's is what I, I thought, thought it was she still said. a PDZ? I thought that's what she said. But we, you know, maybe we wrong. Check on that. I remember. Maybe wrong, but he he that that, that couple really said bad, they wanted gonna, to do something. We're gonna zone a neighborhood, uh, Hamlet neighborhood, so it doesn't really matter one way or another right. Um, right. what it currently is. But I think there's an important point um, worth understanding, which is uh, someone just said nobody wants to live near commercial uses. And it couldn't be farther from the truth. The most valuable per square foot pieces of land in our county is the land near commercial uses. Lots of people want to live near commercial uses. Lots of people want to live near Craig and his auto place, right? And lots of people want to live near lanes. 
that's not what we're talking about because but we are talking about commercial, no, I, commercial. I think you have to I think you have to differentiate between high high land property values and the desire of people to to have a residence next door to it there, there is a difference that was the Eagle Auto thing you know they they were perfectly happy if there was going to be a residence next to them but turn it into an auto repair shop and all sorts of things happen. Right. Well, we're not talking about auto repair shops because that's specifically been- Turn it into a dandy mart and all but sorts of things will is, happen. There already is an auto repair shop and that's lanes. Yep, mm -hmm. there is. And, yeah. we and, have all, and we have the construction business and who wants to live next to that? There Nobody will buy business. the corner. No, you're not, you're not paying attention to the actual reality of the thing. No one wants to buy the corner lot next to them. So what, Wait, are you talking about Pat McLean's place what it, at the end of Gunderman Road? Do you no. have a proposal? It's right across oh, yeah. from the, the parking lot um, talking about the Benjamin. fire department. Yeah, that's, that Pat, that's Pat McLean's at the end of Gunderman Road. And Pat's dead now, but it, it's still, I guess, a construction zone. His son has took it over. I don't, it's all yeah. I know. Yeah, there's and, then, so, and have we been able in 40 years to sell the property next to him? No. <laughs> I don't I think he's trying. Pat has been waiting for a chance to speak. Who? Pat? You're muted. I. Um, I have a, I uh, thank you. I have a question. So I don't, I, 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 don't know. I, I was just letting Pat have a chance to speak. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. That's okay. Go ahead, Pat. Um, I like this design and calling it the Hamlet. It, it takes the word commercial out of it, which has different connotations. And the Hamlet means it's the center of the area and it can have lots of things, especially more dense things. It, it fits with the name better than just calling it a commercial area. Um, and I, I actually like the, the descriptions of, again, rather than just calling it commercial, no matter what, you need to have details on there, what it means, what's allowed, et cetera. It looks to me like the, the list that we have now actually would be good for the area. And we could encourage people to come. Now, whether there's gonna be much commercial the reason the stores are not here is because they could not maintain their business here. For many years, Judy had said that unless without cigarettes and beer, they wouldn't be able to keep the store open. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then Benjamin's couldn't keep it open either. And and it would be nice to be able to have something from my house. I, I actually do walk. I could walk from my house down to the main road. Um, if, if there were things on there. I think there's other people that could as well. So I actually like the design and I like calling it the Hamlet and the Hamlet neighborhood. It, it separates the, the concentration one in the middle and then um, moves it slightly out from the far, going out from that center and then going to the farther out that are not part of that, uh, what could be commercialized kind of things at all. No. Yeah. Thank you, now, as a result of this discussion, it, uh, I've started to think, um, Rhonda has a good point, uh, and, and Ted had a similar point. There are some uses that are in this uh, area now that which are not particularly desirable and which wouldn't, and would, which are not in your list, I don't believe, right, David? Like, but where would we accommodate them if they were not? You know, where do you put your car dealerships and your gas stations and uh, well, and other things that are kind of wanted, but not particular, that nobody wants them next door to them. Your well, they're grand, those are grandfathered in, aren't they? Well, they might be, but that doesn't mean that you you shouldn't be thinking about. For, for an awful long time, the only thing we had zoned commercial were these little black boxes on the map, and all and and, and those all corresponded to well, there was a business there once, or there currently is, and no provision for you know in, in there being anywhere else. Uh, and, and it's not a particularly intelligent way to, to zone, I don't think. But you know, if, if if we have these uses that we that we we ought we think ought to be accommodated someplace. I mean, having a car repair shop in the town is kind of a nice thing, so you don't have to drive to it to get your car fixed. Um, having a 
car dealership is you know it's not essential but it's you know it's 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 not it's not a terrible thing either the but it's not something i want in the middle of downtown you know but where what how do we accommodate that kind of thing that was what we had in mind when we created that commercial zone from from gunderman to not gunderman from hornbrook to miller you know, and say well there's some place there where we could put the kind of businesses that are you know you don't really want them next to your house but but uh, but but that that's a place where we could have somewhat larger businesses when our home occupations get too big that you know they're incompatible with the neighborhood they're drawing too much traffic they're having too much of an impact in terms of you know noise or hours of operation or whatever you know the, the option now is well you get to that point and you have to move out of danby there's no place to go well joel there is something go interesting going on look at where lamort electric is yeah. Then across the road from that is the ch this church. Uh, you know, I don't remember what kind of church it is. And then further up at Muzzy Road, there is now this nursery. So we have these three things that are going on. They're almost making, starting their own little hamlet there. And, you know, that's far enough out of the ham, the true hamlet that um, it, it could be, and it's closer to Ithaca, uh, but another place is really out of Danby, more toward King Road. So, so you're suggesting, Rhonda, that we should be accommodating some commercial uses in our low density zone. I'm saying that there are already the makings of these commercial zones. And because they were allowed to exist, we have to acknowledge their existence. And if, and they are, uh, if they're starting to group together, then, then make it a commercial zone. Are they grouping together or are they isolated individuals at current time? Well, I, I don't think they made uh, some sort of pact. Let's get together and <laughs> open open this and that uh, in what, this spot. Well, but it's my, just my, sort my, of happening. And my that's point why is they a lot are, of they are in DNB. They just yeah, sort my, of happen. My point is they are individuals, and in some cases, at least if not all, they're undesirable to the neighbors. I don't think we should be encouraging that. But where would you accommodate them? Or don't you, or you think they don't belong in Danby at all? Uh, well, uh, um, I forgot the name, Stork, whatever their name is, really belongs down in the industrial park in, in Ithaca, there is for no example. There's no industrial park left in Ithaca. Cherry Street, you know, that area that, that area down there. It's turning into uh, something else. <laughs> it is turning into something else. I'm glad you recognize that. Yeah, the Cherry Street um, Arts Organization down there. The bottom, and all of it, the it, art there, stuff. There, there, may, <laughs> there may be some yuppification, but the bottom line is there's an iron scrapyard. There are, oh, that, that's going out too. Even. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. They've got plans for that area. Well, a new neighborhood. let's put it this way. Yeah. The, the town and the county want to export population to to low to places like Danby. I think we should export industry into there, into downtown. Well, my feeling is that Craig ought to be actually, if he's only going to have cars for sale, why isn't he picking a place where there would be more traffic and more opportunity for sale? And that, and that would be down in on the main road. That's where all the traffic is. Right, and it's cheaper property, yeah. probably out here. Um, uh, when they live there, it's and great. he's not, and, and and perhaps he will do not much harm as long as he doesn't get bigger. Gets bigger, we might find we don't like him as much. Well, can I ask a question hmm. about the where our building is? This is the center, Hamlet Center, or yep. whatever. So I look at our property, and then the one to this south of it and I believe that's the fire station mm -hmm. and then if you go to the uh, east is all of that property um, what was that guy named that just passed Ted what was his name uh, Dobson no, 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 no. right across we were talking about he's got that construction oh um, Pat McLean Pat McLean yeah is that area 
that's across the street from the fire department. Is that all his land right there, that odd shaped piece of property, or is that more than one property? And I guess my question is, where are you going yeah. to have growth or new, new businesses? I mean, right. Well, that was my question too. You know, I mean, well, some of these businesses we don't want them in the core so much. That's why I think it should go further north a little bit. Pitch, you know, talk about that because you're talking about making that like a Hamlet Center, but the fire stations there might our business can't be any more than what it probably is i mean someday someone else will take it over and make it something but well unless um, we add unless we add off-site you know water um water and wastewater all right. right but by north you mean this area which um, yeah north of uh you know like north of us but i mean so there is some places potentially that there could be some growth because right now i don't see any properties that could be if Ted McLean's property, is that his name again? Ted? Pat, no. Pat. Pat, sorry, I'm stuck on Ted. <laughs> if he never and Olivia's, to... and Olivia's no, property. No, you want to understand what my question is. I'm a little concerned that we haven't expanded that enough to allow the growth that we're talking about with new businesses. Well, I mean, it, so what it, are you, it, what are you thinking could happen there? Hmm. At Olivia's property? No, no, no. Right where um, our property is, because the fire station owns us this south of us. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm talking about, and across the street is Pat McLean. Got at that yeah. time, right? I know. It, I know. At one time, um, whoever owned that property, um, and I think he he was still around. I, I'm I'm not 100 sure. They were. He was. He was potentially interested in doing some kind of you know apartments yeah uh, I heard that. some you yeah. know so i mean there there are That's people in olivia i mean i i sort of you know the one of the reasons why i like this i didn't like that i felt the same way and thought these you know focus areas were too too small but at the same time um you know it it if we can focus in those areas then we don't get you know they what we might call sprawl <laughs> um, mm -hmm. with businesses. I don't, you know, but making it easier for people to do home occupations or small, you know, put right. up a shop mm -hmm. in the backyard to, you know, sell antiques out of or so, you know. Um, so McLean's is north of what that area that's darkened and who owned, what is that? So you're saying there's this big piece of property here. Um, three acres, yeah. I don't know who owns that. Yeah, Pat Pat McLean is um, is uh, this yeah. thing. Is that where the uh, auto salvage yeah. sign is? There, the auto salvage the sign blue. is over yeah. here. It's on the corner. It's on the well, corner. Yeah. Of, uh, but I think that sign. I think that sign is for the land down the street, which I think so too. Yeah. The we had an antique shop on right at the beginning of Bald Hill Road and uh, next to the sort of next to the town's property and Uncle he Bill's left. antiques, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. He left. But nobody so wants antiques. He died. Anymore, unfortunately. I think he died. No, his wife, no, his, wife <laughs> his wife died. Sorry. His wife died. He's still there. Died. He's just, but he's kind of he's getting older. So he kind yes. of kind of scaled so back to business. Another example of understanding the scale of things and um, getting a grasp of the scale of communities. This, I just turned on the, um, the measurements on that one parcel and you can see it's 358 by 555 feet. Um, a downtown block in Portland, Oregon is 200 by 200. And whose property is this? That's the uh, the auto salvage sign property. But who owns that? Uh, Bart Trick, Bart Hall yeah. and somebody. Oh, right, right. Yeah. No, no, it's much smaller than that. Yeah, no. Really. Oh. Yeah, Petrocola and Bart. Yeah. Hall. Does anyone know them? Like, do they have any idea? Do they have any plans to put in a mini mart? Yeah, I don't think. Mm -hmm. so. No, it's very small. I've talked to them about it. 
It's not I talked very to them small. one time it's at a town large. board meeting when they came, and I said, what does That's... your sign mean? And he said, well, we're trying to sell that parcel there. And I said, you actually own that? <laughs> I didn't even know he owned it. And he said, oh, yes, we want to sell it. And <laughs> oh, well. Isn't it kind of wet? No, no, no it's not. It's... No, I thought it was. So well, it's this not, is that's... Another, another example is Olivia's parcels. Yeah. That's 583 feet of street frontage. Um, yeah, could you show us Olivia's parcel like that? Yeah, and that's, that's it? What I was just showing you. That's, you that's these ones here. Not the little with, one. Yeah, not with the, the exception of this thing. That's not hers. Right, yeah, he said. It's 500 feet. So if we look at what what's 500 feet, what what is there room for in 500 feet? And we look at this is what we did in the yeah. previous meeting. Um, downtown Dryden, from the clock tower to the library, is 368 62 feet. So let's see, go all the way. So the gas station, still not enough. Yeah, so from the clock tower to Sunoco in Dryden is Olivia's two parcels. We can look at another, another place. Right, there. but do we want a downtown Dryden? I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm not saying you want a downtown Dryden. He's having a lot of problems with their own downtown, right? I'm saying yeah. when you we're, think about whether or not you have space, you have space. Here's Groton. Oh, I think that's very interesting, David, and it's a really good way to, to frame it. But going back to my concern before, that parcel that you outlined for us and that partnership owns it, one person, I'm just saying one person owns that. And if let's say they want to sell it or whatever, it's hard for someone to come in and open a business. There's just nothing else for sale or available in that Hamlet center you know that's why i'm proposing expanding it to the north a little bit so maybe some i'm not sure we'd have to do a little bit more research on the houses that are there you know i know why that isn't benjamin's property for sale what why isn't benjamin's property for sale it's never been for sale i think it's a hazardous waste site isn't it no it got cleaned up oh it did oh good yeah. thank you joe but so, it's it's still full of crappy soil, right? Well, yeah, but, but it's in the middle of the hamlet too. Okay. Yeah, it is in a very good spot. I, going to I use it for, if you're going to do something commercial there, you're not going to farm it. You know? How many? How big is it? Is it big enough to build a store or something? Looks like an acre. Well, it's big enough to build the kind of store that was there before. But that was uh, a grandfathered place. store, <laughs> as Nancy well, it's learned. Not grandfathered it might because it's gone. That's the, you know. Oh well, yeah. But as Nancy learned, one acre might not be enough to do something. No, no. Again, that that was somewhat constrained by the the water and sewer issue. You know, we, we need to enable offsite waste treatment in order to enable the kind of dense development we're talking about for a hamlet. You know, if you have to have acre lots for water and sewer, you're not talking a hamlet. You're talking. No. You know that little parcel there, Benjamin's. It reminds me of this parcel in. Um... Oh, gee, in Seneca Falls and uh, right on the corner like that. And they had built a store that had windows on, on both streets. And, and the doorway was kind of right in the, the middle with the windows on the, going down both streets. And then there were apartments above that. And uh, that was a good use of space, I thought, you know, because somebody was, um, what was in there? It was a beauty salon, I, I think it was. But one way or the other was kind of cute because the windows of the shop butted on both the, both the streets. And, and that's exactly the sort of thing David was talking about earlier. Yeah, and well, it, it really is important that we think about the possibility of creating place. Because if you spread out where you allow commercial development. You can never get anything except a drive only place. 
It's not how traditional places were built. And there's a reason for that. Um, it really has to be as focused as possible. And, and like I said before, a hamlet is really commercial around an intersection. And we're stretching that quite a bit already with the, the parcels that we have. Um, but a, a hamlet isn't a mile of road. Mm -hmm. That's not yeah, but that intersection there, the difference between that intersection in Danby and the one in Seneca Falls is that in Seneca Falls, there was a sidewalk. And there were buildings on all four corners that met the street and created a place. So it's well, yeah. Well, David, if you had, I'm just asking you to speculate. If you had to pick a corner, four, three, well, however many roads go into it, to start a hamlet in Danby, where would you go? I think that the two corners that we're showing are just far enough apart that they could function. Um, but the conversation we had at the last meeting was, oh, why don't we just fill in that little bit between them with more Hamlet Center zoning? And you can't. You, you're already, honestly, too big um, with the southern uh, circle. It's already too big. You can't sustain Hamlet all, all the way along between um, both of those. In fact, I think there would be a good uh, a good reason to remove the northernmost parcel of the southern cluster, but you know th mm -hmm. those, that this map was created before me, so we're moving forward with it, um, unless we have a real reason to change it. Um, but so, I mean, you you just stated a couple of good reasons to change it. Yeah. Right. So you're so you're you, so you're saying that corner is the is what you think is the natural place to do it. It is. Okay. I mean, it already Richard exists, here. and it's a it's. Followed out on two of the three places, and th that's hard to fix, but it can be supported with Olivia's parcel, and it would be dramatically helped by developing the two parcels at the corner, the one where the store used to be and the one across from it. I have uh, a question. Is there any way that we could buy land or someone could somehow work with the Dobson Park and make some housing there. It's kind of off the road and it could be part of, maybe part of, create part of a block. I think wet. it's controlled now. It, it, there's a, it would, state law says that once it's been dedicated as a park, I think it's kind of hard to get it out of being a park. Oh, okay. You'd have to go I'm through not, what's called alienation. The city did it, but. Um. But, but that doesn't mean that the park road and couldn't be used. I mean, Olivia's property essentially abuts the park road. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, what about we just make, call it North Danby, and then the other one just have, make the other part of it a hamlet and just focus on that. Maybe it's, we're just trying to spread, literally spread ourselves too thin. <laughs> That's just an idea. I, I didn't understand what you said, Nancy. She was say, I think she was saying, Buy Dobson, Rick, Rick Dobson's property, call it North Danby and start developing that. No, 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 no. That's not what I meant. I meant <laughs> oh, where, okay. our, where our building is, that first section, that the center, just call oh. that North Danby. And then really just focus on creating a hamlet in the area you're calling the hamlet neighborhood and just make that the hamlet and try to just stay focused on that. Because as far as I can tell, except for that big area that is several acres for sale, there's not much potential of any growth happening there or any changes until, um, I forgot the guys, McLean wants to sell that place. And I, I think he's pretty, you know, he's got a lot of equipment there and I think he's pretty um, intent on using it for now. Hey, so across the street from you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then there's the fire station. So there's really not any potential there right now. So maybe we just like say, okay, that's North Danby. We'll deal with that later. And let's just put our energy. It's just an idea. Cause maybe, like I said, we're spreading ourselves too thin and put the, the Danby, the, where we are, like I said, on that corner, the Gunderman corner and just make that North Danby, you know, uh, multi-use area or something. And then 
have one Hamlet. It is a little confusing to say this is one kind of Hamlet and that's another kind of Hamlet. Maybe we should just do what you said and just try to focus on where the church is and that make that the Hamlet. The sit town halls there, the parks there. There's a lot of reasons. And Olivia's yeah. been dying to do a project there for years. So um, there's some synergy there, you know, good synergy that we could work with. And what I was concerned about is that I, I want to. I guess there's no good place to talk about it. I mean, we've got we've got a conservation working group and we've got a Hamlet working group. What happens to the other kind of commercial? It's, it's, it's sort of a stepchild because it doesn't it doesn't quite fit in our idea of what are, what belongs in a Hamlet. It probably doesn't fit in most people's idea of what belongs in a in a in a, in a, cons in a conservation zone either. Uh, how do we accommodate the you know the the the, uh, the, the, the car dealerships and the and the gas station and the uh, you know, the, you know the things that, that that you know that would take more space and, and and be sort of out of scale of the of the Hamlet core. The the thing that the, the kind of stuff that sprawls in, in any any community of any size, they almost all have these what we, you know called miracle miles. You know, just outside the at the, the 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 developed core of these things, where where you got the sprawling thing along the highway with gas stations and fast food places and and. Um, <laughs> Pardon me, Joel, but do we need to accommodate that sort of stuff? We, th th there's one just a mile, a few miles down the road from us. And they do it very well. Yes. Um, I mean, is there a legal requirement that we must accommodate them? No. 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 Who exactly are you talking about, Ted? Uh, the, the Elmira Road, Route 13. Uh, you know, I, do, I don't think we really need to worry about accommodating mcdonald's and lowe's and we don't need them we don't and and car deal big car dealerships i don't think mcguire is going to want to put open something up here and you yeah, know they own worry, everything all we have to worry about is a little well all we have to worry about is 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 a, is a little dealership turning into something more like dobson's place uh, has been for the last 40 years or more well i think that dobson's place got to where it is because the town wasn't, I'm not a real historian here, but I think the town was not willing to fit, to sort of stand up to him. Well, we, the town did stand up to him a couple of times and it stand up to Bob Maycumber who was south of him before and had it even more um, junkyard than, than Rick did. That's true, but I, I do observe that his pavilion became a house. Yeah, yeah, um, we, didn't, we didn't follow, I mean, I remember when that pavilion, we called it pavilion for a reason, when it was approved and it was supposed to be not what it turned into, and he insisted that it wasn't going to turn into what it did. But, but uh, Joel, why is there no um, lanes and crags in West Danby? Um, where would you put them? I guess that's. A... Well, but well, you said you're you asking where where should we put these <laughs> places, and I'm I'm wondering why they never popped up in West Danby to begin with. Why why does why does the Hamlet here in Danby have these problems when they don't seem to have occurred in West Danby? That's a good question. Uh, I think they're just over the town border near West Danby. But I see that Catherine has a, her hand up. Yeah, and Pat too, I think. Pat, you want to go, Pat? You're muted. There you go. One of the things uh, that I thought this this whole operation was to look at is the zoning we can put up for the things that we want. In one, in particular, if if the argument is that nobody's selling right now, so we shouldn't zone it, then that's a bad argument because that means when somebody comes up and wants to sell, there is no zoning that tells us how to do it. So the goal is to set zoning in advance for yeah. what should be in those places, and the goal is. Again, we can look at what kind of um, businesses, what kind of businesses we want to allow and not allow. I don't see a reason to have a gas station here anymore. I don't think it would be at all viable for somebody to put one in. Um, cars will all be electric in another 20 years anyway. Right. <laughs> well, in that case, call it a charging station, but go yeah. ahead. Yeah, uh, Catherine. That's basically what I was going to say too. We, I thought, what were the the basic thing of all of the planning, all of this planning group, everything is about conserving and planning for the future. 
so if we do set up zones even even if we have small areas that you might want to concentrate in the beginning you want to protect the areas that are expanding so that they they are still within quote a zone um, no matter how we want to call it, it it seems to me that the larger picture is um, what the planning group was all about in the first place and the change of zoning so if we focus on what we do want and how we want to protect it down the road then we do it's not that we're looking at what kind of business we do or don't want we're looking at where where businesses can be and I don't see any reason why we can't think about um, the, a little cluster housing here and there and you know as far as customers for things uh, Whitehawk has a number of houses right now and they can walk easily I mean we there are people and you know let's focus on what we want down the road when we're not when we aren't even here anymore well I, I hope you didn't misunderstand me sorry I'm just gonna cut in here I don't mean not not zone that area around Gunderman that's not what I meant just don't call it a hamlet like because it's <laughs> too confusing it's not a hamlet it's north danby or some other a mixed use area or something and then that other area that you you know guys i know i'm jumping into this whole thing late but the other area down by the church and everything where olivia is call that the hamlet because otherwise you're confused it's like man what hamlet is which here and it's all spread out and like david said that doesn't really work especially when you see how what is it like a mile? How far is it? Like a half a mile between one place to the other? It's pretty far. I'm not saying don't zone it or think in the future. I'm sorry if you thought that's what I was saying. I'm just saying don't call it a hamlet because it's just way too confusing and it's different. You could well, still it's, it's all, all the information you came together with and just rename it. That's all. Mm -hmm. That's all. Sorry if this is this is a. a uh, tangential, but I'm thinking about something that uh, Whitehawk was mentioned earlier. David, you, do you know that um, Whitehawk, I believe, has permission to open up some commercial establishments in their front yard, so to speak, along 96B? No, I haven't really dug into their community. They, I believe they do. Um, I don't think you, so. You, I think, yeah, I think they had the provision closer to their cluster. Yeah. No, they, they they actually had some things. I think they have restaurants, bakery, tavern. Bakery. It was a bakery. And it okay. wasn't on the yeah, it wasn't but, on the highway, was it? Leslie? Wasn't it up closer to the houses on, on the left? No, no, it's, it's, on, the it's on the highway. On the highway. Yeah. yeah so we have, we, although they may never get there, we do have a commercial operation, which was at least a pipe dream for somebody. Yeah. Sorry. Well, we do have a commercial operation right there at Whitehawk. It's that guy who sells the stone. So, where where is, where is Whitehawk going to put the bakery? Is that what he does? I thought it was just a storage yard or something. No, he sells stone. He's up running a business. That's. I think that's um, a fellow who lives on Hornbrook. Um, Pettigrew. I can't. No, I can't remember his name. Pettigrew. He's a landscaper, and his brother lived in the trailer for a long time. And I don't think anybody's living in the trailer, but I think that's their landscaping business. I think he they lives on Hornbrook Road. Storage yard. I think they just store stuff there. Yeah, but yeah. it looks horrible. But the bakery yeah, but, was going to go to the left, the left of their their driveway. Landscaping business is an example of something of, uh, that takes more Hawk. more space. You know, the, the, you. It's mm -hmm. not, I mean, we may never need another gas station, but you know, how do we accommodate something like a landscaping business? I mean, that, that's probably not something you want in the Hamlet core. It takes right. up too much space. Right. <laughs> it would be perfect at Dobson's property. It'd be okay up the street, right? And that, and that you know, along the highway there, it's, uh, the other thing about the highway is nobody wants to live next to it. Well, so why- Hi, The highway or the landscaping? The highway. Dark, uh, Dobson's, Dobson's losing their commercials, their commercial now, they're going to, with this new concept, they won't have commercial zoning, right? Well, the, the, I think, I mean, there's two kinds of commercial, you know, there's, there's, the, there's the, the kind that we wants and needs access to traffic, uh, and also takes up more space, 
and, you know, and then there's the stuff that will f sort of belongs in and easily accommodated within a hamlet and uh, a core area. And we, I think we do need to, you know, have some provision for kind, the kinds of businesses that take up more space. You know, the, 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 well, we have, we did have one in West Danby. Roy Castellan ran his, uh, ran his commercial, uh, you know, uh, Paul trucking and excavating and, uh, you know, earth moving business out of his, it was a home occupation, mind you, um, but it took up quite oh, a bit, of, but it took up quite a bit yes. of space. Um, and, you know, and these, uh, these landscaping businesses are also being done this sort of home occupation too. Yeah. But um, landscaping uh, really, Joel, is uh, ag and markets. And it could easily be, uh, I, my feeling is, and being somebody who's done it many times, is that people who are interested in buying plants will drive down some really rural roads. I have gone on huge trips to even out of state to see somebody's landscaping business. And uh, we don't mind doing that. And we consider them to be someplace out in, you know, in, in a very farm type setting because it really is ag and markets. Uh, da David, a question for you. Your, your neighborhood Hamlet zoning concept, would that allow uh, Rick Dobson's place to be developed into a sort of a, a commercial center, a mini mall, if you will, with a, you know, a Brookton's market, maybe a French restaurant, uh, a doctor's offices. Is that within the scope of what you're, you're, you've written out? It would be difficult. I, I think that what would make the most sense for that parcel is for it to go through a PTC process. Under the current zoning, they could do a little bit of commercial on corners only. Um, I mean, they would, they would subdivide. I think what the what the Hamlet neighborhood zone prevents there is what I think would probably be their go-to move, which would be just to subdivide off 20 acres along the road and sell it to someone who wants a dandy mark. Yeah, or a Dollar General or Yeah. So oh, that, God. Uh, that that would be allowed under the current commercial zoning. Yep, uh, by right. <laughs> would not be allowed under. I am uh, really opposed to the by right stuff. But that, yeah, that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't be careful what, what you, you what have to be careful what's on your by right list. That's all. <laughs> yeah. What we're talking about is by by making some by right options for what we want, which is small scale mm -hmm. development and small scale housing and small scale commercial you'd be giving him options that would be more profitable than going with a dandy mart or a dollar tree or- But if I understood you correctly, earlier you said that even though a dandy mart or whatever it is, is not by right, it's merely a matter of checking off all the boxes to get past anything, you know, any kind of site review, they could do it. Uh, I, I, gas station's not an allowed use. Say again? Gas station. Oh, I, absolutely. Yeah, okay, forget the gas. <laughs> I forgot they have gas pumps. Yeah. But but um, at Dollar General, excuse me. Sure. Yeah. So if, right. <laughs> if someone did a Dollar General that came to the street and had architectural details and had the parking behind and shaped the parcel so that the building took up 60% of the width of the parcel, and did all of the things that we require, um, then yeah, they could. And there actually are at least a few, I, I'm kind of a collector of, um, if you'll forgive the phrase, I call them noticeably less shitty versions <laughs> of corporate um, <laughs> uh, chains. And there's actually a, a example of a dollar general that went into a village in Vermont that required all of those things. It's brick, it's two stories, it has a door on the front, the parkings to the side and behind it, it has a sidewalk. It, it is a village building. Um, and in that case, we wouldn't have a way to deny it just for being that brand. 
And, and, is, and it have a, is it going to have a fine French restaurant in the back? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, yeah. We, 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 we put in the commercial design guidelines for a reason. So that if, if, if one were to get a Dollar General, it doesn't look like the one in, the one in Cantor or the one in Spencer. But, um, but the one everywhere else. Except in Vermont. My battery is running low and only has 10 minutes. Are we going to continue? It's probably the not going to go much longer than 10 minutes either. <laughs> I think we're done. I don't, I don't think we're, we're going in a direction that's getting us any further tonight. Um, I think we need to get more feedback from people who actually live in and own land in the hamlet um, and continue this conversation. Um, the the thing that's at the top of my plate right now is actually getting things nailed down for our consulting contract um, to look at the septic situation. And what is holding me up there is I need, um, I need locations for the consultant to work with town highway department and dig some test pits to actually see the capacity of the soil. Um, and I've, I've got feelers out to a few people. The, uh, the new person who's managing the Dobson property is not willing to participate because they're, uh, the, the estate isn't settled yet. So they didn't feel like they could participate at this time. Um, what about Olivia? Uh, I'm talking to Olivia. I'm talking to Russ. Um, I am interested in other ideas. We talked about the parcel that the town owns off of Bald mm -hmm. Hill. Yeah. Um, How about the church? That's a How about, possibility. What, uh, does Whitehawk already have a sample? What's that? Does Whitehawk already have a sample? I don't know. Um, we might be able to use their information, but what we're really looking for here as places that you could possibly site an off-site septic system, which the, the front of the White Hawk parcel might be one. Um, there had Probably been the park too. there had been talk in in a few meetings about, you know, should we approach um, the Danby Community Association about the park and seeing if the mm -hmm. park would be willing to host a septic um, uh, for, for a parcel. How, about the how, 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 how large a septic area are you thinking? I don't know. It depends on the capacity of the soil, how big it needs to be. Yeah, um, right. Uh-huh. Hmm. How about yeah. the school, the Gunderman School? Is that a possibility? There's a lot of... It's, up a, it's uphill, though. Yeah. Means oh, a pump. I think, yeah. I think this Gunderman School is a possibility for the <laughs> happen on that parcel if a school district decided that they didn't want it anymore. Um, I think it's harder for it to support off-site things. Um, yeah, we might, we might look along the creek downstream, you know, because you could always gravity to anything that was on there, but uh, but there's a lot of wetlands to kind of limit what you can do too. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. definitely constraints. For yeah. Sure. Mm, very interesting. Who would, would the people that live in the Hamlet area now along 96, would they be required to hook up to this? Like, how do you pay for something like yeah. that? I don't know much about this. Maybe we talk about it at another meeting. It's getting kind of late. Yeah, I think we'll have to talk about it at another meeting. But I think that's actually one of the barriers is it's a lot easier when everyone has a bad septic system and they need to hook into it. Mm. Um, because then you can get some economies of scale and people are interested in it. What we have is uh, we need to look at possibilities for how could we support development here and there where people want to do something new on a couple parcels or on one parcel. Um, and it's too small to accommodate the water. And, so, you know. What about, um, does anyone know how Schickle did it over there in his, what well, I call it clown town, but um, it's all one property. That's how we yeah. did it. But if we're talking about making a neighborhood with some mixed use businesses, maybe it would all be use one septic system. It could like be that. done that way. I mean, like for instance, you know, if the park were willing to accommodate a septic system, Olivia's property could be developed much more densely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And you could maybe you could maybe run it across the street and pick up the Benjamin, you know, the corner lot there, so that something could be done in that corner. 
is not that far away. Yeah. yeah. That's a small house. That looked like pretty small, like little lot though. It's, it's, big, it's, it's not much. Well, it's, how big is your lot? I forget. I hate to say it. It's either a ha an acre or half acre. I don't know. Some of it. Yeah. I, I think it's similar to your lot. Yeah. Is it it, big? It's big enough for a business. <laughs> there big was enough. a business. It's, it's, it's big enough for a business. And there was a business there. What yeah, is not big enough is to accommodate the business and the water and, and the wastewater. Yeah. It's 100 by 120 feet. So it's basically two urban lots. Mm, interesting. So the, um, the Benjamin, well, maybe it could be a little apartment or something, you know, that too. Yeah. With mm -hmm. the chop that, that the issue, it just needs to be able to plug in to septic off site. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it could be a, where they used to call, you know, we had the apartments upstairs and the retail downstairs. Yeah, mixed use Main Street. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, on, on that note, um, thank you all for being here. And I think we can sign off and uh, continue this work in two weeks or three weeks because we have a five week month. So the next date is when? Uh, the Hamlet group is the second and fourth. Second. Friday. second. Okay. So it will be the second in May. 14th. 14th, yes. Mm -hmm. I know that. I just finished that calendar. Okay. It's my birthday. Oh. Oh. Thank you very much, David. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Good night folks. Thanks, Dave. Good night.